Hi everybody, I'm really excited to introduce to you my friend and colleague Dr. Nancy Dome, who's the founder of Epic Education. Uh, Epic Education's a organization committed to equity and social justice in education in all its forms. And Nancy and I got to work together at uh, Cal State San Marcos in San Diego many moons ago. So I'm really happy to, to get to talk to you, Nancy. And um, Nancy, you know, what we were talking about before we started the recording was that, you know, the people that I work with, much like you, they're all working to make a difference in city councils and in schools and community mental health and all these different kinds of organizations. And I think one of the things they, they're challenged by or needing more conversations about is how to make sure that their teaching and their leadership and really their acts of service are socially just. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you could talk briefly about what you think social justice means and then give us a few tips of things we can think about today that we can enact in our leadership and our teaching and our, and our community centers or wherever we are. So thanks for talking to me. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, William. I'm, I'm glad to be here. It's always a pleasure to work with you. Um, so to your question, you know, social justice is, it's a big, it's a big umbrella. Um, but basically, when, when we really think about what it means to be socially just, we have to think about how are we empowering, you know, all everyone who's involved, all the stakeholders, and really reaching their fullest potential, right? So regardless of whether we're talking about education, or we're talking about business, or we're talking, you know, whatever other aspect of life we're talking about, it's about being represented, having a space and being able to reach your potential, your highest potential, not, not the cultural limitations um, that are tied sometimes to potential, but, but where everyone has the same opportunities to reach the same potential, right? And so um, when I think about education, I think about, you know, having a, a, a social justice lens really means how do we get beyond these cultural um, the, the cultural limitations, and I don't mean that the culture's limitations, so I want to be clear. I want to be, I want to say there's work by Eubanks that was done in the 80s that really def created this term about um, cultural barriers where um, just because, just because they know what you walk into a school and this is your race, that they can already predict where you're going to be. Right. So that's a cultural limitation. It's not it's not the limitation that because I'm a black woman that I I'm, don't have the brains or the ability, but it's because I'm a black child going into school that the way I'm perceived actually changes what access I have. So it's the story as the educator that's in my head. That's right. That I'm seeing when you walk in the room or maybe the system believes about who you are or different communities are as they access our services or a classroom or an interview, right. if you will. That's right. So, you know, when, when you put that lens on, that, that social justice lens, you're really looking at um, how, how do one, you know, to self-reflection of first looking at what biases do I bring? And we all bring biases. Anyone who says that they don't bring biases to a space does not bring truthful with themselves. And, and if you can't be truthful with yourself, then there's no way that you can do this work, right? So I bring biases to the table. I have uh, prejudices and I have to deal with them. I don't have to punish myself for them. I have to acknowledge when they show up and then deal with them. And so if they show up in my interaction with the student, then it's my job as the, as a teacher, as a leader, to really challenge myself to get beyond that and figure out how to do that with that student, right? To, to, to pull that student into the light, you know, and pull myself into a space that allows me to see what the student truly is capable of instead of what limitations I might already attribute to that student. Well, there's an act. I mean, when you're talking about the actions, what I notice is you pointed inward first. Yeah. It's really that self-reflection of, ooh, there it is. I didn't, or maybe I knew that, that I thought that, or what's going mm -hmm. on for me right now, and getting into observation or connection or relationship with my own self about when different communities I'm working with or getting to be with, what goes on for me. Is yeah, that what I'm absolutely. hearing? Is that what I'm hearing absolutely. say? Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, I think that many educators look for fixes. You know, we want the binder. We want the... 
the strategy, you know, I want to walk away with a strategy. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that thought, you know, having been a classroom teacher, but really the change has to start within first. And there's no one really talking about that. There's no one really talking about, wow, I need to really do a deep self-reflection to find out how I contribute to the circumstances of my students because I'm a contributor. And until I can acknowledge my role and I keep blaming the victim or blaming external factors, you know, single parent family, poverty, you know, all these things, then we're, we're really never going to get to the solution because there's been plenty of people who have been poor. <laughs> there's been yeah. plenty of people who have come from single parent families who achieve, you know, to greatness because it has to do with the role models and the people who believe in them in their life. Right. And so we have to put these external factors and push them off to the side and really look at, am I contributing to the success or am I contributing to the failure? And then we probably, I mean, what it made me think of while you're saying is that I actually have to pay attention with who's in the room. Yeah. Because I have to, and I don't want to put what we were talking earlier, it really is those lenses of identity that I have to look through. Mm -hmm. to, so can you talk about looking through those lenses? Because you mentioned that a bit. What do you mean yeah. by that? So, so the lenses, you know, I bring, I bring a specific perspective, right? I'm a black female. I'm educated. I grew up in a... Um, pretty diverse neighborhood. So these are all impact my lens, right? But I don't know what it's like to be a white male. I don't know what it's like to be a Latino, a Latino male or a Latina, you know, female. And so I have to be able to step out of myself and try to encourage that other perspective. And so that really means that I need to be talking to people who don't look like me. Mm -hmm. You know, I need, I need to find out what they're thinking, not project what I think they're thinking, but actually ask them what they're thinking. And, and sometimes that's our kids. I think a lot of time our kids are left out of this dialogue. And, you know, because they're kids, we don't respect what they bring, but they actually have opinions. And I think they can let us know what we need to know about them to know them better. You know, how, what is the best way you learn? I mean, why we aren't asking kids that question, I don't know. Because I think they could tell you. Okay, I, I, I interrupt because I want to make sure I get something that you said that's really powerful. You have to know who you are and the lenses you're looking through. And you said, I know where I come from. I know who I am. And I'm looking through the world from that way. And there's certain ways I don't look through because I'm not from that community. Right. And so I'm not a white man. I'm not a Latina. I'm not an Aboriginal woman. I'm not a gay man. I'm not a – so I have to, A, start looking through those lenses and considering and also talking to – different communities so I can understand because that's not my experience. That's right. That's right. And so the, the more diverse um, uh, relationships that we can have, I think that the, the, the closer we will get to that social justice, you know, desire, you know, because every voice will be included and everyone will be at the table, so to speak. You know, what I hear, what I don't hear you saying is, I don't see, or we're just all human beings and I, I don't see color. I don't no. see this. What you're saying is I have to look through those things. I, I see the lenses of who I am and I have to look at those lenses of different kinds of uh, identities in the world that may or may not be my experience. That's what I, yeah. it just strikes me. We talk about yeah. this all the time. So I, it, Nancy, is there, we're almost out of time and I, I want to be really concise with people about, you know, you said checking in. You mm -hmm. said looking through lenses from mm -hmm. identities. That means race and gender and mm -hmm. uh, language and sexual orientation and all the different ways we can look at it. Is there one more action um, that you could suggest that we could do now or tomorrow that could start yeah. that conversation? <clears throat> that strategy? Here, here's yeah, that strategy. Right. <laughs> the, the binder strategy, right? The binder, the binder strategy. strategy. Um, you know, so there, there's a tool. I actually uh, just developed it last year, and it's called an equity walkthrough. And I developed, developed it for a district I was working with because I really thought, you know, part of how it's hard to see what it's like, we don't know what we don't know. And so it's hard to see things that we don't know to look for. And so um, I developed this tool that I borrowed heavily from, you know, other resources who are acknowledged on it from the internet. But basically what I did was constructed and reworded so that it was specifically related to um, the its, its physical environment, its content, its relationships. It breaks down these sections and it just has you look. So you take this list and you just mark yourself. So you look at physical environment, like whose faces are on the walls. 
You know, does it represent the population of the people that are there? Um, whose work uh, is celebrated in the school? And and it you just rate it. So it's not, it's you see it, it's either there or it's not there. So it's not subjective. It's very objective. And you just rate it. And you when you come to the end of it, you really get a chance to see, you know, wow, like, oh, you know, I'm not really, I'm missing a little bit here, you know, because when I look at who's in my room and I look at what's in the wall, it's not, they don't mirror each other. And so this is a tool that I offer for free. My whole, my whole goal and the goal of Epic Education is really to provide resources um, that are accessible to teachers. And if, if, anybody uses this tool, that's what we want because we want people to start thinking this way because ultimately it impacts kids. So they can um, easily download it from epiceducation.com. It's on our um, resource page and it's called Tools of the Trade and it's an equity walkthrough, free download. You don't have to sign in. You know, we never know you're there. So we're not trying to sell you anything. And just take a look though. I think it's a really great tool to, to start looking through that lens. You know, we'll put the link on this video so people can find that and I'll follow right. up with, with that link. And also, I, I've seen this tool and it just makes me think, I bet you if I was in a city council or um, in a mental health community, mm -hmm. so I bet you even though it's education specific, it still is going to inform um, Absolutely. what we're doing. So I'd encourage other communities of practice to look at it as well. Absolutely. And not only look at it, but take it and modify it, you know, um, and make it fit their space. Uh, the physical environment would fit any space. You know, some of the other things are more education specific, but, you know, it, it's up for revision. And if you have to create a tool, that means you're thinking about it, right? That's right. So. Well, you know, I'll leave it by saying thank you for the conversation mm -hmm. and also you know what you made me think of all the time we talk and all and and this this work and for the people listening it's really about courage mhm mm yeah and you didn't say i beat myself up when i realize you know i'm checking in with my bias what i heard you say is i'm checking in with my bias yeah. Or I'm and checking I with my lenses it. and I acknowledge yeah. it. Because, you know, why beat yourself up over something that is? It's like saying I have brown eyes, but I want blue ones. And so I'm going to be angry at myself forever for not having blue eyes. It just doesn't work that way, you know. And so we know that they're there. And that is the biggest step is acknowledging that they're there. So when they show up and it changes my whole conversation, you know, when it shows up, if I'm having a dialogue and I see it, I'm not afraid to say, you know what, some stuff just came up for me. So this is this is my reaction. Sometimes it doesn't happen immediate, but it always when I find myself in that place, it always requires that I go back and make it right. And, and, and I think that's a, a, it's a wonderful piece and it, it just deepens any relationship, you know, when you're able to have that real on, honest dialogue. Well, I'm grateful for this dialogue. <laughs> I just encourage everybody to check out Epic Education. I'll put the link for the equity walkthrough and, um, hey, you know, want some inspiration, talk to Nancy, knowing people like you are out there in the world doing the work. So yeah. thanks, Nancy. Thank you, William. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>